say we were gonna talk about? What were we gonna? Uh, Watchmen. What were we gonna? Talk oh about? yeah, Watchmen. Watchmen. All right, so I got a theory. Wait, so, plot synopsis? What's nah, nah. Forget, yeah. forget Watchmen. I just got. I just gonna oh. jumping off. I'm jumping off. So not the building. Ah! <laughs> yes. It's okay, we're underground. It's fine. So, uh, so you know how dystopian movies and media are like really prevalent now and they're they're really popular just because they're easy to get into and they they're some sort of reflection of shit right shit that's happening yeah. now superhero movies are pretty much the opposite of that watchmen's being the like only exception but really richard nixon getting four terms that's that's kind of a blessing kind of <laughs> utopian right there <laughs> i agree but um why do you think superhero movies have to be the antithesis of dystopian movies. Such a big word. I love it. I think I'm it's not. just because people want the most, like they want to see something yeah. optimistic I more like so than something yeah, it's like saddening. So people, like you want to see something hopeful. People just want to be like, I want to see a movie that feels good at the end, and so they're gonna watch a superhero movie, or I want to see a movie that has a profound idea of what society is today. That's kind of grim and futuristic and so i'll see a dystopia movie I think and so they fit to what you want to see i think superhero movies are kind of like they're kind of like ideal in that it's like oh there's a problem there's always something that can fix yeah, it it's, like it's there's optimistic. always some bigger power and then dystopias are like well at least our life isn't like that it could be worse I feel like so super, i feel like it's too end of the in spectrum superhero movies there's always like half a city that gets destroyed and it's like oh there goes three million people yeah, yeah, but it's, it's usually true. in Eastern Europe, so it's okay. It is usually in Eastern Europe. <laughs> so it's fine. Or oh, Africa. Or doesn't count. City. Yeah, or New they York did City. address that, Yeah, though, but no one what, died in that. Wasn't that, like, didn't they make it very clear that no one died? There was only, like, like a couple hundred people. It was in the Spider-Man movie, I think. Oh, okay. Was it Spider-Man? No, it was a, a Civil War. Was yeah, no, but... One of them, I forget They addressed which. it in the meaning of uh, Civil War, and I think in Avengers 2. They were just like, oh, yep, we destroyed an entire city. But, but, only, I mean, but only, like, 200 people died there. Everyone else could have died, yeah. Somehow. No, I mean, like, in which which one was the one with the... Was it the one with Quicksilver? Which one was that? That was, that was Ultron. Ultron. That was Ultron. Age of Ultron. Like, like everyone just, like, fucking got destroyed in that movie. That whole city they was... Destroyed the goddamn city. Yeah. The, they saved some people, but... They destroyed that village in Papalajistan. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been called that. No one would have known it. <laughs> Who the hell knows? Do you think but, it's... A problem that there's always a happy ending with superhero movies like the fact the hero always lives the hero always saves the day or at least that's how it usually works like do you think we sh there should be a change in that well if the hero well, they're dies all classics. they can't make a sequel so yeah i know yeah, they're all classics so, like, it'd be Mark really hard to be like oh just kidding batman's dead now like mm -hmm. they can't do that i mean that was the end of superman versus batman i mean clearly he's not actually dead <laughs> obviously but, like, not he did die at the end Listen, like in comics, pretty much every character Ever has died, died multiple times. Yes, yeah. yes, including Superman. Including Superman. <laughs> they don't. But then he comes it. back. Then he comes back somehow. They don't. Or they make a new series. Uh, or both. Who knows? But is that too idealistic? Well, yes. No, because well, no, they actually do die. No, they, they, they die for real. They do they die also for real. Get resurrected for real again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like Dragon Ball. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. oh no, he died. Ah, that's fine. We'll wish him back. <laughs> And whatever. Yeah, and that's why we like it, I think, because it's not like it's a personal like purpose of a superhero. Yeah, no, I, don't, I don't like Dragon Ball either. I would just like, I don't know. I wouldn't be interested in a movie where just like, oh, that was nice. And then you, the reason you watch the movie is to get the happy feeling. You don't watch a movie to be depressed. It's part of the plot. <laughs> that's like the that's not. Though. What about sad movies then? Yeah. No, everyone cries at the end movies. and it's like, I hated this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, know, you never leave a theater happy. I think of any off the top of my head. I can't think of a movie in which I Marley was just and sad me. and that's the end. Uh, Marley oh, and never, Me was okay. the only one okay, and everyone hated enough. it because the dog died at the end. I wouldn't say I hated it. I was... So... Wait, that movie's like from fourth grade. It is an old movie at this it is, point. yeah. So what place do you think superhero movies play now because when superheroes and like comic books were really prevalent and people really needed heroes to look up to, we were it fighting was like Nazis. it was like yeah, it was like World War One, World War Two, right? And then because I think Action That's Comics crazy. number one with uh, Superman came out in like nineteen ten, yeah. right? What's and then and then like the thirties, huh? whatever, dude. It was it was wartime. <laughs> it was definitely wartime. It was definitely wartime. And basic and like was World War there was II, also though. like a resurgence in the sixties with the Vietnam War, right? 
Am I wrong? Is that no, Silver Age right. stuff? Is that the, was that the Golden Age? Like the no, Golden Age was the 30s. Silver right, Age was like the 60s. Yeah. 60s yes. Right, so like we had really big booms during wartime. But like we're not really in wartime now, so why do you think superhero movies are still really popular? It's not like we need heroes to look up to. They make bang. I think we still mm-hmm. do. Yeah, they make bang. They do. And, and it's bang. because the fan base is so strong that making the movies is what pulls st- people in because everyone still watches the comics and has the movies and like all the old movies and watch the TV shows and watch the comics. Basically, the company just invested a lot more money, so they got a lot yeah. more fans. I think it's not as a society we don't need the heroes like to like socially motivate us as a community. But I think individually, I think it's good for people to see some bad have, shit. have people <laughs> like see that like I don't know. I mean, especially with the new Spider-Man movie, with like the fact that he's a high school kid and he's like a loser and he becomes this hero. I guess that resonates with people. And then also, I know they're trying to diversify heroes just so it's like anyone could be a hero. And I think that's, I mean, yeah, I know it's like cheesy and it's no, cliche, no, I just that but I'm like sure. the companies don't make these movies to create heroes. I mean, they, it's all just to make money. Like they don't make. They it, don't like, create heroes. The heroes are heroes. Yeah, 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 they, they don't make yeah, these exactly. movies to give. Like, they don't make new. I, I, I don't think it's for motivation anymore. Yeah, they, they no, they do, do, but it's not. It's only for money. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so money aside, because obviously they're going to make money. Action Comics number one came out in 1938. Yeah, but the best way to make money, I think, is lost. How do you get people by playing on their hopes and their fears? It's just, yeah. so, so why do you think no new superheroes have been made? Too hard. It is too hard. It's too hard. It's like, po- it's like Pokemon. To, to be fair, like there's pretty much a hero with every sort of power and back. Quilt man. <laughs> That's a real thing. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's well, his power? Oh no, his name is Crazy Quilt. It's yeah, Crazy no, Quilt. Yeah, what does he do? He's a Batman villain, right? Yeah, he's a Batman villain. But a very, Quilt. very underwhelming and not at all. Very well underwhelming. Known. He's like a Z-list character. <laughs> Seriously. He's like the wall from Spider-Man. I but, think we'll- I think it would be hard to propose a new superhero. Yeah, I mean, they ran it's like Pokemon, powers. that's what I'm telling you. Like, yeah. it's, They're just out of ideas. Some Except of them Pokemon end up cool, still make more. But, but Pokemon just keeps going with like an ice cream cone Pokemon. That was so long ago. That was a long that time ago. Like, that was a long time ago. That but was, like, that, ago. But that was when they ago. started... Th- yeah, exactly, that's when they started running out of ideas. That was Gen 5 when they started running out of ideas, yeah. 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 But, um... So... Let me, let me put this into, like, Two words. Minutes. Let me just think. So... I think today a lot of media is centered around relatability. Like there always has to be a, like a character you can relate to. Like you were saying with the new Amazing Spider-Man, where it's like a dorky kid in huge air quotes in high school because he looks like a thirty-year-old man. Really, I don't think. No, so. the new Tom Spider-Man. Oh no, the I mean Spider-Man. from the Amazing Spider-Man, not okay, Spider-Man. See, oh, Tobey okay, Maguire. Yeah, no, yeah he looks like a thirty-year-old yeah. man. He doesn't. Tobey Maguire like, does. Yeah. Oh, no, oh yeah, Andrew Garfield. Garfield. Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield. I, didn't, I didn't like that one as much. I thought it was he was too perfect. Like the original. Yeah, Spider-Man no, he wasn't a nerd. Is like a nerdy kid. Yeah, he looked like he wasn't. He didn't look like a nerd anymore. Right, but like, do you think like relatability is an important thing because no one can? I think that's why people. I think that's why people really like. I mean, yeah. That's why the Hulk isn't really like a movie that everyone talks about, and I think that's why everyone really liked Homecoming. See, I would what about to Thor? Differ. No one can relate to Thor, but yeah, but you don't need to relate to movies. Thor. He's Chris Thor's Hemsworth. Awesome. You just look at him. Was, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> <I would laughs> you don't, you don't like, need no to be related to Superman, though. I mean, the everyone Superman wants to be movies. Superman, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. everyone yeah. wanted everyone to be Superman to. during wartime because they wanted to feel invincible in the face. They wanted to be Captain America during wartime in face of like the Nazi war machine. Captain Canada. See, I would raise an objection to that. I think people do relate to the Hulk, but in a different way. It's not like, oh, I turn into a giant green monster and I'm angry. But everyone has. There are things that they deal with or their anger, and sometimes they wish they, like, it's kind of, I'm going to go into, this is a metaphor, and I'm air quotes, because I know that's not actually why they made the movie, but it's kind of like, the, when he turns into Hulk, that's a manifest, manifestation of him, like, getting angry, and that's, like, something he needs to learn to control, and it's like, But I think yeah. there's a lot of emphasis on the idea that you have to control your anger and not let your emotions get the best of you. Mm-hmm. So why would, it's like... Like okay, I can relate to this, but like, if we've all if we've all like developed ways of dealing with our anger in constructive ways, it doesn't make sense. No, but he what well, he well, does is he works with it. the same thing as John Wick. He kills everyone because oh. someone killed his dog. Like no, it but, doesn't make any sense either. No, but with the Hulk, instead of letting his anger, instead of letting his anger control him, he like he controls his anger and uses it to his advantage. And it's like not necessarily with anger, but like I feel like that can apply to anyone with any bad scenario. Just get mad. <laughs> just kind get of mad like turn things. it into a good thing almost. Yeah, I think I, I th- like the Hulk. I, he was a very yeah, but like if you watch too the much movies, thinking. Yes, 
Because he's using his yellow. he's using yeah. his anger not for good. They're not, but... not very good. I watched, I watched, I watched no. what's the one with um <laughs> Mark Bob, Ruffalo? Bob I like that one. That's the new one. Yeah, the new one. No, I mean the old ones, like the original Hulk movies that they made that they took. The I, like they oh, never made I saw, I saw, a new like, Hulk movie for Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. He's just like in it because just, no one was gonna rewatch the Hulk no, movie. No, he's just sort of there. He's like he's no, like I like the Hulk, but like I don't think if they made like they made like prelude stuff like. Uh, Thor and um, you know like yeah, all the characters to build it up. Like a movie. No, they made one that they was like part of the universe, but it wasn't with him. Was yeah, like, like in the new Thor it movie, he's in it, but a couple like, months like before on the first Iron Man. Too. Yeah, like they made the Iron Man to like build up to it, but like they didn't make a Hulk. No, they didn't make a Hulk. It was like a couple months before Iron Man. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know, but that was, so like, it was like really overshadowed. But it wasn't Mark Ruffalo. Oh, no, I guess they did. <laughs> oh, then I guess I saw the. I guess I did see the yeah, original. The original Hulk. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's that was the stuff, but no one was even really looking at it. Yeah. And then Iron Man came out. And they're like, oh, no, it's oh, the greatest movie ever made. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> what about Iron Man as a relatable character. I don't. He's not. He's, He's not. not at Batman's all. not relatable either. But I wish I was both of them. But I wish yeah. I was both exactly. Both. It's like drunk. Yes. Yeah. Is it like an but aspiration? With money. Story? Yeah. Do you think it's more about aspirations instead of it relatability? Could be both. It could be both. I mean, I don't know, because, okay, obviously, realistically, no one's ever going to be like, when I grow up, I want to be Iron Man. Like, it would be really cool, but, like, I mean, like once we get to that point, we have to make that yourself. decision. What do you mean? I want to get kidnapped by terrorists. Yeah. And, and build a build... suit in two days in a cave. Then yeah. kill all of them. And, and kill all of them with fire. Then you made a way better suit and kill even more of them with missiles. And yeah. What do you think, Sean? I look at it differently. Like, uh, as one of things, there's like the relatability aspect of like superheroes is just, like not necessary. It's like, in my opinion, like more or less the reason people like enjoy superheroes is the idea of like if you were that person, be like really cool. Same way people like want to be really rich, even though like stare like statistically speaking, like it doesn't actually garner that much extra happiness to be richer. Um, it's always that idea of like I could be better, but I'm not, and it's that idea of like trying to get there but like you probably never will um it's just like very hard for people to accept the fact that like hey life's gonna be kind of mediocre in the end of it because like they don't want to accept that but if you think about it at least with event i've noticed i'm doing this with avengers they're kind of like downplaying the coolness of superheroes and like playing up the stressfulness because now they have this whole like in avengers i don't know what it's called but they have like the the, like, superhero union or whatever it is, and then, like, it's, like, the stress of, like... The Avengers? Like, what, like they're fighting, <laughs> no, 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 like they're fighting no. for benefits? Like, the, um... <laughs> like, no. dental? Like, at the, at the end of like, Civil War, Like, Captain you mean America's... the actual Civil War? Yeah, like, in in Civil War, when they have, like... like, the comic, the comic style, not the movie. Well, was there still a thing in I the movie? I think it was in the movie. I don't remember. You're talking about the bill they were going to try and sign? Well, the movie Yeah, started, like, the bill they're trying to sign like, and, like, all that. It's, like... Sokovia Accords. It was different, though, yeah. wasn't it? Than the comic book one? No, the combo was completely different. And also the fact that, like, better. Captain America splits from the entire group. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought... I just feel like they're... It's really stressful to be a superhero. And, like, I didn't realize that until yeah. I, like, watched Civil War. I was like, wow, that sucks. So I don't know if that's something people would still aspire to be. I know, the flash is on. Should <laughs> I read like, Civil War and come back to it? <laughs> yeah. Because the movie's... I have it. <laughs> the movie's fucking terrible. <laughs> it wasn't terrible. I didn't like it. I enjoyed I thought it. thought it was good. No, like, it I, I liked great, it in the moment, but if you look back on it, I was just like, why the hell were they fighting? I'm yeah. very, you can say that about a lot of the movies, yeah, that they aren't great, but they're good enough. Yeah. Martha... Martha. Martha. That was I, the that's, that's different. That's in a whole other <laughs> That's in a whole. Yeah. Martha! <laughs> why why did you say that on her? Why were they oh. fighting and why did they stop fighting? Because Martha! Because Martha! <laughs> Where's <a> Martha? <laughs> oh, goodness. I think you okay. can say that about, like, just Avengers movies in general. Like, looking back on it, you're like, oh, that, like, why were they fighting? But I think it's awesome enough that it makes up for it. Yeah. Like, well, I did like yeah, that. So here's the thing yeah. I started noticing about a lot of the movies. It's like, there's a difference between, like, having a good movie and having an entertaining movie. And so, yes. In my opinion, true. a lot of the superhero movies are very entertaining. Very but, like, entertaining. 15 years from now, I wouldn't be like, hey, that was, like, a really cool plot. That was a cool cinematic plot masterpiece. Art. Yeah, it's yeah. more or less, like, this was, like, in the time, like, it had cool graphics and shit. Which is, like, is that, like, are, is people, are people just trending more towards, like, being entertained yes. and not actually caring. 100%. About them. Yes. Absolutely. Well, that's that, pe- people want, like, easy no. to consume media, not, yeah. like, yeah, they don't want something anything. you have to think yeah, about. Like, yeah. I think yeah. the New York Times has, I forget what Open. their their Flesh Kincaid scale rating is, but I oh. think it's, like, yeah, I know what he's talking middle about. school. The f- a Flesh Kincaid <laughs> rating, it's a, it's a rating scale that determines, like, what intelligence level, whatever you're producing is. So, like, actually in Word, if you go into Word and yeah. you highlight things you've oh. written and you do the Flesh Kincaid test, it'll tell you it'll what tell you, level of vocabulary. Yeah, you're, you're writing on, like, a ninth grade level or a 12th grade level. Yeah. yeah sure. Sounds about right. So, like, <laughs> I get 11. 
Yeah. Every time. It's, like it's bad. Seven. Probably get like eight. <laughs> With the entertainment, I, I agree with what Sean is saying. And you guys know the movie Idiocracy? No. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so at one point there are the guys watching TV, and it's like TV is on the screen, and then there's all these ads and stuff flashing around it. And it's like that's kind of what our generation is becoming, like this um, very like short attention span, kind of just like we want to see things exploding. We want to see action. We don't want to have to like think about what's going on. We want to see Ow My Balls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, essentially. So I think with superhero movies, I feel like they're kind of catering more to that. Like, Watchmen's obviously an exception, because that was an yeah, amazing I was, plot. I was just going to say, what right. do you think about Watchmen? Where does Watchmen fall into this? Because it's sort Watchmen's of... Watchmen's a little not different. Really. It's, like, it's like, not really a superhero it basically, movie. It, it, it more or less follows the book word for word, scene for scene. So, like, it's pretty... Oh, there's a Watchmen book? Yeah. 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 Oh. It's, oh. it's a comic book. Written, like, written in the 80s oh, by man. Alan Moore. I'm writing oh. this down. I'm going to read this. Definitely do. It's pretty oh. cheap on Amazon. Yeah, and also... I love that in the graphic novel they only used like secondary colors for yeah. all the panels. Well, but then just... when there was something like really big, then they used primary colors. They did. That was really cool. Oh, that is cool. But yeah, where do you think Watchmen fits into all this? Because it is not. It's it's, it's like not a it's not ending. a superhero story, but it's not an anti-hero story like Suicide Squad I like, is. I feel like yeah, Watchmen. You think about it. How many people know what Watchmen is? I'd say a, a lot of bit. people. If you well, really? if you like comic books, I'd say that yeah, you know about it. No, but if you them. don't, or you've at least heard books. about it. I didn't know that many people who have. I don't think I know that many people. It's like a yeah. It's like a superhero movie for people who want more than just the glamour and the excitement behind superheroes. It's people who want. Yeah, but that's how it gets It's real shit superhero. It is real shit superhero. Yeah, it's like yeah, like Rorschach, bitch, putting like whatever his whatever his powers were. Powers are being terrifying. <laughs> just being terrifying. Being edgy as hell. <laughs> being edgy as hell. Let <laughs> me Google this. Let's see what Rorschach's I like no, They didn't have powers. Only uh, Dr. Manhattan had powers. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. I think, oh, that's true. I forgot who I was that talking about this, but I was or I was reading something, and it was like, a movie's supposed to make you feel... Like, the point of a movie is it's supposed to make you feel something. Like, if you don't feel something at the end of a movie, like... Or if you do feel something at the end of a movie, Could then, like, a movie depression. did its job. And I think with superhero movies, like... You You're do feel so something, happy. but it's a lot easier emotion to procure. It's like, oh, happiness, they saved the city, or like, like, amazement, or... But that with was Watchmen, badass. Yeah, yeah, but Watchmen produces a lot more complicated feelings, I think. Like, at the end of the movie, I was just very conflicted, I remember when we saw that movie. Wait, but didn't Osmodius had power? Didn't he? He was super fast. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't think that was a superpower, he just was fast. That's bullshit. Yeah. He was ridiculously fast. He's not <laughs> fast. He, was, he was ridiculously fast. So like they played off that it's not really a superpower. It's weird. Uh, like yeah, Dr. I guess, that is supposed true. to be the only one with actual like yeah pa- like, powers that are not natural. Like, yeah. Oh wait, what about um Night Night Owl was like Night Batman. Owl was just rich. Yeah, he, he, he just, just got rich. a big inheritance. He just yeah, he just had. He was just small. Batman, but not as cool. He was just like Batman, but without the parents without the dead. Mm-hmm. Was just would like, would Night Owl and Batman be like? Oh yeah, Night Owl. Mortal was... enemies. Just, no. no, just because he was an owl and he's a bat. No, it'd be like. Well, there, there is, there was actually a DC animated movie I know, where the they, had, they had Owl Man. Yeah, because like they're universe. like, what are, what are, jo- like, what are bats afraid of? Not Wouldn't jokers. it be Owl Woman? But owls. What? For the inverse of Batman. It wasn't oh. that inverse. Okay. Like Bizarro and Superman. Yeah. Like. Yeah, kind of like. They're both male, but they're. I, the I can see. Okay, so Rorschach, he's, he's, his power is being terrifying because he thought the mask was his actual face. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Give me back my face! <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's just insane. He's just insane. He's so That's his superpower. <laughs> being and... insane. So, like, superhero movies and anti-hero movies. Like, Watchmen isn't an anti-hero movie. I think it's more of just a political thriller. It is kind yes. of more political it's thriller. That's a weird way to put it, but I... Yeah. It's more You're of a political incorrect. thriller. So, what about anti-hero movies? Where, like... like Punisher? Yeah, like Punisher, Deadpool, Suicide Squad, where you're not rooting for anyone who's like, yes, this is the person who is directly good, or where their alignment is sort of blurry. You're still neither... rooting for them, though. No, well, Deadpool, you're definitely rooting you're for definitely Deadpool. Rooting. Because oh, definitely. Because what about... Just, like, Ryan Reynolds you're... is hot. Yes. I mean, yeah, never you're never you're even trying, so. What about, like, <laughs> remember that animated too, movie with the, with the blue guy who was the evil villain? Oh, Megamind! Megamind, with yeah. With Will Ferrell. Oh, Megamind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah you're still rooting for him even though he's a bad guy. Because the thing is... You're rooting for whoever the movie's about. Good. Yeah. That's no, true. But, but with the 
anti-hero movies, like, the anti-hero presents himself in a way that Still you hero. like them and you connect to them and you're like... I did not like Harley Quinn in Suicide Squad. Oh, no, I didn't like her. I did not oh. like the movie Suicide I, could, I, could. I did not like, uh, what's his face, Slipknot or whatever, where you just... <laughs> 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 he just died of the rope guy. The, 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 power of, the power of an exploding head. <laughs> he has yeah. the, he has he the weakest climb. intro because it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this guy, he can climb things. I wonder about Boomerang guy. Captain Boomerang. Captain Boomerang. Captain Boomerang. He is not an, an appealing person. He's not even appealing as an who, anti-hero. Who are you rooting for that? Like, I guess we'll see. I think that's why yeah. I'm rooting for I was rooting for Jared Leto because he had a purple <laughs> yeah. Lamborghini. <laughs> but no, like no, but see, Martin, that's why, yeah. that's why I feel like I didn't like Suicide Squad as much. Like, I didn't... Like, yeah, sure, the effects were good, but I didn't like it as much because I just felt like I couldn't... There were too many like characters, characters. jam-packed, and we had no idea who the fuck they were. <laughs> Unless you knew ahead of time. Which, yeah, it didn't. I mean, you know. I, mean, yeah, I, did, I think but... they tried to make her out as more of like, look at this bitch. Yeah. Not like, yeah. not like, oh, look, she used to be smart, and then she got twisted, and now she's smart and crazy. Well, I guess yeah. we were rooting for Will Smith, then. That was kind of yeah. the character yeah. we were going for. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, he was the only one. character with any background that El, mattered. El Diablo oh, yeah, yeah. El Diablo did too. Him yeah. too, yeah. but like. Yeah. Yeah, you were kind of going for Old Diablo. Because he was, yeah, he was like, like, he was so always he like. He transforms yeah. into the giant thing and you had no idea. Yeah, that was a little bullshit. You, you weren't rooting for him, then you're just like, wait, what? But it's like when you get a cast of all the strong silent types, there's no dialogue. Oh, but come on, you had Killer Croc watching BET, <laughs> and he was kind of short, to be honest. Yeah, Killer Croc's supposed to be, like, he was really he's short. supposed to be really he was like, big. He was like I'm sure we can go into, like, the failings short. of that movie, but, like... Yeah, honestly, I don't remember much of that movie, because I remember going to see it with it. you guys, I've seen it and I was sitting next to Chasm, and we just spent the entire, the entire like, last 30 minutes of the movie Throwing making popcorn. fun of that last fight scene, where they have, like, the giant headdresses, and they're, like, fighting each other, so and Chasm was just like, oh my god, like, what's going on? It was... It was a fun the time. weird witch lady would kept like yeah, dancing. Yeah, yeah, her. She was doing the weird confused. dance. I was like, why? And then Chasm was just trying to do the same dance like next <laughs> in the movie theater. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. So like, I think like the main failing of that movie is that the characters weren't relatable developed. at all. They weren't and developed. We did, they weren't developed. Yeah. At all. And it's like the and even if like terrible. you have like like the Punisher. Like, people like the Punisher because he's a well-developed character, not because they necessarily agree with what he's doing. Yeah. Same thing with Deadpool. Same thing with Deadpool. I completely agree with that. But at least Deadpool Deadpool's does. funny. <laughs> Deadpool's funny, though. Yeah, that's why, that's why like people like that's him. Like, that's so why do you think that people like Captain America? Because as far as I can tell, he's just he's, he's just an outstanding BJ Blazkowicz. citizen. He's, he's, he's he fights for the he's... truth, justice, and America. All right, all right. Do you know like, if you say, like, America. if you say, you don't like Captain oh, America, yeah. you're not American. Support our troops! Support our troops! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's yeah. another aspect you're not looking at. There's the idea of, like, in the Captain America movies, like, like character development, I think, like, we're just kind of lazing over and be like, oh, like, character development should have been better, and that's, like, one of the key things. But I think there's also the idea of, like, if you look at the motivations, like, why people are doing shit in, like, Suicide Squad, it's literally, like, do this or you'll die. You're all done. So, like, the characters really don't have to change But it was the movie. still selfish motivation in the end. Well, uh, yeah, it's self centered in that, like, they're not going to die, but, like, they're being forced to do it. And so it's one of those things where it's, like, there's no actual motivation that you can relate to for suicide. Oh, okay. it's like, for them no one's like, actively going behind you, like, pass this fucking test, my friend. Like, no one's actively, like, doing that. And so, like, it's an idea where, like, there's no purpose for them to change throughout the movie. And, like, regardless if they change or not in the end, there was no really purpose to do so because, like, they're just forced to do so. And, like, it's a really shitty, like, more, like, narrative to, like, relate to. It's like, hey, life is just going to force you to do shit. Deal with it. It's like, yeah, what okay. the fuck is that actually saying? That's a really Whereas, good like, point. in That's Captain good. America, like, I don't necessarily know, like, the full movies, but, like, there's clearly, like, some kind of arc where it's, like, he's a scrawny kid, like, actually wants to change, like, wants to help his country, and therefore, like, goes through these really creeped out, like, tests and procedures and shit and becomes really cool. And so, it's, it's like, him personally has a motivation to improve where, like, a normal person can relate to that. And so, therefore, he, like, goes through these, like, really, like, kind of risky scenarios and actually it pays off for him. Whereas, like, Suicide Squad, again, like, you're, you're forced to do it? Yeah, I was, yeah. Steve Rogers is very like self motivated. Even when we see him, yeah, even when you see him as a scrawny kid, he's like, I'm still gonna fight. Like and when he gonna... changes, nothing happens. Oh, he and stays then the same. there's that one scene in the beginning of Captain so America when he's, <laughs> he's at the training. He's like training with everyone, oh, and like they throw the grenade in, and he grabs the grenade, and he's like, Get down, everyone! And he's like this little kid, but everyone like, would like, like to think they would do that. And that's, yeah. I think no, even no, if I would not do that, <laughs> no way in hell. Well, what if you just have a room of just really virtuous people? So with those grenades, all of them jump on it. No, but that that shows that even though he wasn't like strong and ideal like or he didn't actually have any superpowers at that point he was still a hero this was what was important yeah it was it was in here 
Yeah, gesturing yeah. at the heart. Yeah. yeah. That's what they did in the movie, like, 50 times. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. But I think that's why we like him. We like him not be- not because of his... I mean, obviously his powers are pretty cool, but we like him because we like his... Pers- like, he's a good personality, and I think that goes back to the relatability. Powers. Thing. Guy with shield. <laughs> okay, so, he throws so Captain shield. America he throws has... He throw a shield. Wait, so Captain brother- America is good at Frisbee, and has, <laughs> and is a stand-up guy who like walks grannies across the crosswalk. Too. He's good at can jam. <laughs> he's a, so he's just a boy scout who can play can jam. No, he plays can. He just throws a shield at the can jam, just slices it in half. Just like, and also, your life. Is a... okay, this might be a minor life. tangent, but my yeah. brother asked me this question the other day, and I Which wasn't one? sure. Doug asked me this question. Chad. Okay, Chad. Ah, uh, oh, no. Okay, he has his license, and I'm really scared now. Oh, Chad. Oh, okay. He's a terrible driver. Okay. Um, <laughs> He's not actually a terrible driver. He's fine. Slash yeah. But uh, he was, we were talking the other day about Captain America, and he was like, wait, Captain America's shield can't be cut by anything, right? More or less. Yeah, yeah so how did they cut Pretty the much. shield? Adamantium. They didn't cut it. They, they pounded, pounded the it into shape. They pounded it into shape from a metal or something that was... What is it? No, like, like, like you know how nothing can cut diamonds, but diamonds? No, it's vibranium, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of like that. It's vibranium. Okay. Or it's, vibranium. it's vibranium. It's vibranium. Oh, yeah, probably vibranium. It's vibranium. Yeah, it is vibranium. I was wrong. Which is basically adamantium. Which is basically adamantium. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, but I like, okay, that. so, so I mean, I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll Google this. I'll Google this. Okay, so, sure. real fat shit. You're fine. Yeah, do that. So, if Captain America is just a nice Boy Scout who walks grannies across and knows how to tie some knots and play can jam real well, <laughs> um, what about someone like, I don't know, Black Widow? Because Black Widow doesn't necessarily seem like a hero hero, just like. She's in the same situation as our pals in the Suicide Squad, where it's like oh, really? you—they build, they build at least some kind of a story for her between her and the Hulk. And I know, like, she doesn't have a great like backstory in herself, like because she's all sex appeal. Yeah, that's what I, that's my opinion. Like, she's very much just like, Black hey, Widow? she's hot. Like, Honestly, you don't I don't. Yeah, that, that's fine. That's enough. No, her, her bad story. <laughs> that's all that's required. Her bad story is that she was trained by the Soviet Union to kill people. She's haunted by her actions forever. See, I yeah. wish they would build on that more. Cause see, I had no, I didn't know that, and I'm assuming that's from the comics. Yes, no, that's, yeah. that's also so why it's I do, also know, I do in that the story. Movies, but like, it's, it's not very It's, crazy it's more like alluded to than actually just to come out yeah. and tell you. But I wish they did that. I have a question for you guys. What do you guys think about like female superhero movies? I think there's a lack of them. And yes. Because yeah, like, there are so many like, females. Because like, there aren't that many like Wonder Woman. Woman. That was a really good movie. I didn't see Wonder Woman. But I felt like there was like... There movies that don't exist. Wonder Woman had a lot of like... With... What's his face? Steve? Like romance. I think it was, right? yeah, like romance. Steve and Travis. I feel like it's just a superhero. Let that Wonder Woman be a superhero. Don't be like, oh, she's a woman. So Leave Britney alone. But do you think yeah. there's some. Oh, okay, wait. Something I to say it. about the fact that the majority of people who are superhero fans typically are male. Like, females can yes. be superhero fans, but the majority of. Like, males would probably be superhero fans less so than, like, necessarily the majority of females would be superhero Hot fans. topic think, begs to differ. I think There's that's, a yeah, lot of Batman is, merch. I don't think no, that's no, no, true. No, 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 but I said, like, of the percentage of males versus the percentage of females, I would say there's a higher percentage within the male community that likes superheroes compared to the percentage of females. Uh, again, I don't think that's true. I think that's 100% true. At least... I think it's 100% true. Yeah. yeah. Especially, no, no, I'm, sorry, I'm, not, I'm not saying that there's, maybe like... Maybe not more... No, 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 like, I know what oh, you're I saying. Like I know you're saying, Batman's like, maybe cool. 75% of the male population likes superheroes and, like... 50% of the female population. See, I would say it's higher. I would say it's maybe 70% of the male population and maybe, what, like, 65%. Even people who aren't, like, diehard fans, read all the comics, like, are still fans. Yeah. Like, I... I guess there's some validity to that statement, but it's more like the idea where it's, like, I would say the majority of male fans would be more invested in, like, the comics and backstory of the actual superheroes yeah. being put forward, whereas the females are probably going to see the movies and not actually explore the backstory. No. Because well, if you look like at the... I know, f- that's, yeah. I know no, so, that's That's like, like, you're saying, like, all the people I know and interact with... I've them, never met no any one. girl besides maybe you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh, there's this girl to my on my school. door who's, um, like, okay, super so. into DC. Yeah, okay, okay, this is, again, like, a, like, a lack like, of... Like, anecdotal. This is absolutely anecdotal information. But I feel like... On both sides. The like, average, for, yeah. okay, then we're gross. For how the in depth thing. you know your superhero knowledge, the difference between guys and girls should almost be negligible because yeah. the amount of people who are so diehard is so very small. This yeah. is fair. I would say, anyway, the point I'm trying to make is, is that these movies are typically more able to appeal to male audiences with male superheroes, mm-hmm. and that's why yeah. they are more likely to produce it. I, maybe it's like a vocality sort of, no, but that's like, true. there's no real, like, in my opinion, like, one, I think there's a lack, like... Okay, then I'll put it this way. When, when superheroes first came out, I would, I would tend to believe the majority of people who were interested in them during that time frame were not females. Yes, that's which true. Which means that, as a result, a lot of, like... Like, you don't have a female Batman. You don't have, like, 
I guess there's uh, one room yeah, for like Doom. No, in that, in that, but, no, no, no. but in context of like the one who's hyped up, you don't get a hyped up Catwoman, you get a hyped up Batman. And so as a result, like you have this system where like because it was created during like a male dominated era, it's only like male dominated characters now. And so it makes it really hard for like someone to be like, hey, like Catwoman is actually like more important than Batman and like creating a story and dialogue behind that. And so as a result, because it's created in this system that like previously was male dominated, it's still pre male like the the tenants are there. And so like. There, like, you can't underplay the fact that like, there's some nostalgia riding on these movies where it's like, hey, like, I know Batman, he's, like, this really cool dude, I'm gonna, like, relate to him in this way. And I think there has to be, like, a transition in the people making the movies, and it's not gonna happen overnight, because, like, these movies take, oh, like, definitely. four or five years. Um, transition to, like, highlighting the aspects of, like, minor characters who are female and making them into, like, the new Batman or, like, the new, like, Captain America, which just doesn't happen. Also, okay, maybe this is just me noticing this. But I've noticed that a lot of the, even, like, the female, like, supporting characters or, like, other female They're superheroes. They're lackluster. What? They're lackluster, my They're favorite. lackluster, and all of their backstory centers around some romance. Like, in, in Suicide Squad, just for example, Harley Quinn is, like, the whole thing with the Joker. The girl with the sword, I thought she was going to be really cool, and then I was just like, oh, no, her dead husband is trapped in the sword, and she whispers to it, like... And I thought that just really took away from the aspect of, like... I mean, you learned absolutely nothing about Katana in that yeah, movie. Yeah, that's all... No, that's literally I all you learned about I forgot she was her. in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was just oh, there Katana. at the end. Oh, yeah, she's a good guy. Trust no, they didn't even, she didn't even get, yeah. like... Oh, well, she did get an intro, but it was just like, oh, yeah, she's gonna come along. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I guess I just wish there was... I think it's easier and more plausible, though, uh, because... <laughs> really shitty because it's there but i think it's more plausible for a lot of people to believe that a female would be more likely like it's a shitty i'm gonna put this out there shitty narrative that exists yeah um but the narrative is like it's more likely that a male would like chase after a female or sorry a female would chase after a male than it is to have a narrative of a male chasing after a female which like predominates it to you can just like oh like this is the normal like narrative you've seen where like the female just chases after the guy because he's really hot or whatever like really cool and like he's a superhero it's a shitty narrative, but that's a narrative everyone can relate to, and therefore they just keep supplementing that in instead of building a new narrative. That's true. I mean... I guess I just wish it would be... It would be nice to have a female character who's motivated by, like, motives other than love interest or, like, love triangle. Yeah. I guess I mean, it's such Halle Berry's Catwoman. Yeah. Halle, Halle Berry's Catwoman. Yeah. We should make, no. <laughs> should make an care. alcoholic female character that may, builds a suit and kills terrorists. Oh, I would totally get... I would totally fund that. I would be so behind that. I mean, okay, they've tried... I don't know. I didn't watch Iron Atomic... Man. Did any of you watch Atomic Blonde? Yeah, no. I saw parts of it. And it, it, was, no. it was it was awful, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They try making female James Bond without any. Was there any like romance in that movie? Yeah, there was one between uh, Charlize Theron and. But it was it was it like the main point of the lady. movie? Was that like the motivation of the movie? Fuck if I know, dude. I know she got mad after it and killed the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what about a what about a a superhero movie where it's like, like. Wait, wait, it's sorry, not sorry, a male sorry. superhero. I learned oh, how to make the shield. <laughs> that, okay, that was a while ago. Um, so it's vibranium, which is stronger than adamantium, and then they melted it and poured it into the, a mold of the shield. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good to know. What's the melting point? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we need they to threw it into the sun. Guys, so what if there's a movie and it's like about a male superhero, but he dies in like the first ten minutes, and then the girl that's supposed to be the love interest... Like, oh, puts on the suit and becomes the That was hero. a Batman plot. It won't fit her. That was... <laughs> okay, obviously, he gets it modified. <laughs> By who? God, Chris, there are tailors. <laughs> By they can the take butler. it in. They <laughs> had... That was a Batman plot. Imagine going really? to a where there was with one, a Batman suit. There, there, there was like, a plot where Bruce died instead of his parents mm-hmm. in the, in the oh, yeah, alleyway and thing, and the, his mother goes crazy with grief and becomes the Joker, oh, yeah, and the dad becomes Batman. Ooh. That's a flash oh, Flashpoint. Yeah, yeah, Flashpoint. We should watch that for yeah. Vendetta. Good shit. I haven't seen that. V for Vendetta. Vendetta is yeah, it's a very cool. similar arc where, like, at the very oh, end, yeah, like, yeah. V, who's, like, this, like, mysterious, like, he's he's male, but, like, he's kind of an age gender. Don't spoil it, because um, I don't want to read it. Or are you going to spoil it? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah it's at the it. end. Whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, V for but Vendetta does that. Long story short, like, V ends up dying in, like, this scene, and so as a result, like, her name's Evie, I think? It is Evie. Evie, who's, like, the female character in the play, and, like, they've had, like, a relationship, but it's, like, Weird. I mean, not. It's not innately no, it's sexual. Like, it's, no, it's, it's like not. Sexual. It's, it's a very. It's more, it's more like companion. Master and apprentice. It is. Yeah. yeah it is my master yeah. and apprentice. And so long story short, what happens is like the whole movie is like the male is like doing all the plans, and he's just kind of like, I exist and I'm here, and like she's kind of like witnessing all that's happening. And the very well, end, she's just confused, doesn't really understand yes, anything that's happening. This is true. Um, and so the very end, like the final plans, like get put into place, and like uh, V ends up dying, and like Evie's kind of one who like champions his cause after his death and continues it. Mm-hmm. But I can guess when it's near the end of the movie. That's like the end Don't of the movie. Don't actually yeah. see that play out. Well, like, could we assume it? Like, 
it pans out well for her, I guess. It like, pans out well for pretty much she, everybody. She, yeah, she like gets her to like the really oppressive government. It's a dystopian. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like it gets her the oppressive government. Also, wait, that's a cool question. Inside of dystopias, are like the individuals who are trying to get rid of society considered like, like we automatically assume they're like heroes, but like that discredits the fact that like people could be happy within a dystopian society. That is true. It, it's yeah. portrayed as dystopian, uh, honestly, because usually these movies, I think, t- make a point of showing the dark underbelly and not focusing on the functioning aspect. The, the functioning aspect that may was. require that it's like that. Yeah, I fear who it was. Someone like pointed out that like a true dystopia is actually like, a utopia, or a true utopia is actually a dystopia. It's mm-hmm. one or the other. Um, but like, it's just the idea where it's like. If you truly have a utopia, it, like it, it, like it just doesn't pan out. Like it actually be dystopia because not everyone can do what they want, and so as a result, like, like say for example, like crime, right? Certain people like get a thrill from like doing crime, and like that's something that can't exist in a utopia. Therefore, their like outlet can't exist. I'm not saying like crime is like necessarily good. I'm saying like speeding is. They've a good just example. been ostracized. Like speeding is a good example, right? Like if you speed, yeah. you're committing a crime, but no one's like, ah, oh, shit, I'm so guilty. I went 66 in a 65. Like. It's the idea in principle that, like, in a utopia, you couldn't speed. Um, and so it's, like, one of those things where, like, maybe it's cool for you to, like, speed in a concert where you get, like, a... You enjoy it. I, I, <laughs> I, I'm trying to, like, be kind of, like, yeah. non-specific. Like, anyway. Yeah. Point being, like, that can't exist in utopia, so there's things that, like, can exist in outside of utopia that create more, like, enjoyment that can't exist in a utopia if it's actually a true utopia. Um, and back to, like, the hero question, like, does that mean, like, hero... Like, people who are represented within dystopia is, like... I guess we kind of consider them heroes if they topple the government, but, like, that narrative does like, it just automatically assume that, like, the government's bad. Yeah, I think it's because of the point of view. I think we're being told from someone in the government's perspective, it's like... Well, I mean, isn't the whole point of a dystopian society the fact that it is undesirable? Yeah, right, to, the, like, to the rebels, who obviously consider it undesirable. It's undesirable to... The Empire ha- based on how it's <laughs> portrayed. Okay. Right, but also, isn't there some kind of, like, aspect of, like, the victor writing the history, right? Like, let's say, for example, someone, like, thought, like, the United States government was, like, really shitty and, like, overthrew and then wrote the history. It's like, oh, this government was so oppressive. Like, they gave us free speech, but then they limited it in certain ways and were kind of nondescript about it. And, like, that that's a plausible narrative you could make. Okay. Does that deem, like... Or maybe, but, like, they, they can tell the truth, but not the whole truth. Yeah. Well, no, 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 like, if you take, like, dystopian framework, right, dystopian framework is, like, the government's really oppressive, and someone who's, like, kind of in the government, but not particularly in the, the inner party of the government, overthrows that government and looks like this, like, if it works out well. If it doesn't work out well, you get a Winston Smith who just gets, like, corrupted. If you get someone who works out well, they basically overthrow the government and, like, instate, like, a more free society, but, like, in the context of, like, the United States, if you want to take a dystopian, like, framework and apply it, the government, like, limits certain rights on the First Amendment. Like, you have, like, freedom of speech, but, like, not in all cases. And so as a result, like, is there a plausible narrative made that, like, someone overthrows the United States government and they're a hero in that because they're grooving an oppressive government from, like, a, like going back to your point of view point. Like, is the idea where it's, like, you can create a narrative where it's, like, oh, this person's just really shitty, but, like, are they? Uh, I guess there's, like, no real reason to question that in a lot of cases. Which is probably not good. So do you think that that's a flaw in superhero movies? Is that the villains aren't questionable? Well, yes, I guess, like, yeah. That's it's always like one. it's always black and white. Besides, like, oh, I feel like the Joker, he was very black and white, but he was just. Wait, well, he was made gray in the like the new Batman series, where it's like he has this idea where like the reason he like creates chaos is because like the government just shitty. wants to. Well, yeah, also that like there's other aspects of in it. Also, I guess that's his main motivation is because yeah, just, like, but he like, but it. besides that, I feel like that was just played out really well but when you think of another batman villain like uh mr freeze he's a really good batman villain because yeah. of his two-sidedness like he wants to get enough energy to help bring back his wife right yes yeah and so you can see that his actions are justifiable in his mind and maybe some of our minds and that brings a lot of depth to his character yeah, I, so, I like those villains better, or the ones you can kind of relate to a little bit, because that kind of scares you. You're like, I could be the villain, a little bit. Also, in the new um, the new Spider-Man movie, what is it? The villain is the, the vulture, vulture, and vulture. like, but the way they do it is, it's like he's doing it for his daughter to like, like he's. That's his job. It's basically. his job. Like it's he's trying to make job, enough money to support for, like, his family. Also, like his crew. Yeah. They got like, they were supposed to be doing the cleanup job. Yeah. And they got, and they got kicked yeah. out. So technically it's like, wait, from a moral standpoint, is this wrong or yeah, right? Yeah, so it's like, like for his family and his guys. Yeah. 
and they don't make him out to be evil. Like they had that one point where he like shoots the guy with the the gun and he like disintegrates and he's like shit. I thought that was like the freeze gun. And then he's like, oh and well. He's like, oh shit! I just disintegrated one of my guys. Like he didn't actually need to kill him. So no, like, like. Yeah, but then he was okay with it. Yeah, it wasn't. Cool. He was like, oh he my god, what have I done? He was just like, what's he gonna do? Whatever. Yeah, but like, it is. I know, but he could have reacted like, oh, that was I mean, a terrible thing I did. But he was just was like, eh. Not that great of a guy. And then he just like swooped it away. Yeah, like, I mean, that, that guy, brings up like, the question: Do the ends justify the means? Never. Never. Always. <laughs> always. Sometimes. <laughs> um, Sometimes. I guess it really depends what you're talking about. Yeah. It depends. Ah, oh, the best answer. Yeah. It's just very hard to make absolutes. Yeah. Like. And it's like the, the more absolute is like, oh, killing is unjust, but like, yeah, people have reasons like, why they kill. Yeah. What's that famous one? I think it's like, if someone goes up to your house and knocks on the door, you open it, and they say, "Hi, I'm a murderer. I'm looking for your roommate because I want to kill him." Do you know where he is? And you know that. One he's moment. In... Let me check. Closes the door. Another one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you know that your roommate's in your room. So you'd want to say, oh, he's out to save your roommate's life, but then you're lying and lying. What if you hate No, your but see, that's, that's where it, like... So, like... I don't think lying is anything. But lying isn't no, that bad. <laughs> no, there are certain... It's like a... I'm learning about this in my, in my the law class I'm taking. There are, like, certain moral justifications that outweigh other moral justifications. So if you're lying to save your roommate's life... You're lying, which is like a very minor, like right. But let's help me. Let's say, for example, like he's like, oh, like if you don't tell your roommate, it's like I'll just go kill someone else. If he's not here, I'll come back later. Or what if you really don't like your roommate? (laughs) Yeah. Or what if you pull out your concealed carry firearm and shoot him in the face? Well, let's let's, let's, (laughs) let's, 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 even if that person... Yes, but it's more morally wrong to shoot someone, to kill someone. Not always, self-defense. Stay yeah, that's so right. it's, it's yeah, just sure, such a gray right. line. Yeah. I don't it's think hard. that's a gray line at all. No, literally, every time I open my law textbook, they're like, is this morally right? Here's a bunch of arguments. Then the end conclusion is always, no. we don't know, maybe, figure it out. Yeah. And, just, like, and that's why we put an innocent man behind bars. <laughs> Yay. For the rest of his life. <laughs> I mean, you, I mean, I don't think that's a complicated question at all. I don't think lying to save someone's life is a bad thing. Yeah. But I think no, more, more kinda... of the question that leads into is like, oh, I, you could these men, this many people will die, but oh, but like more people will die if we don't kill these people. Oh no, no you're talking like, about the trolley that's... problem. No, but yeah. it's like oh, no. lying is wrong. Right? Yeah, but that's so such why... a gray. <laughs> lying is wrong. No. Murder is wrong. Those are equal. Is what you're saying? No, no, but... no. What I think so, who like, was who was saying it? Was it Kant? Kant. Kant. Yeah. No, no, but lying is Kant? yeah the with the categorical imperative. Okay, oh no, I lot, thought you were gonna say that. There's a lot of different like the two main. No, no, but he's saying that point. if you don't lie, you're not responsible for the murder. He is, and he's doing wrong. No, but technically you could have prevented right, that wrong, prevented wrong from being done murder. by doing a lesser wrong. Right. This is deontology. Yeah, deontology. it's deontology. Yeah. Deontology. deontology is the idea where it's like, hey, like you're not the one doing the actions, therefore it's not your responsibility nor your obligation. But technically, from a, a utilitarian standpoint, yeah. you have the right to preserve life and increase the amount of utils that exist by making sure your roommate stays alive. Yeah, you're basically yeah. maximizing good in society. Yeah. yeah, but you're still doing a wrong by lying. So what? Okay, do you, yeah, but, so, but and if you tell the truth, but you're why, not doing any wrong. But wh- lying is only morally wrong from lying is morally wrong, but not at a level that can be legally regulated. Murder is morally wrong at a level that can be legally regulated <laughs> so since it's higher. <laughs> <laughs> like since it is higher on the. Um, on the scale of like wrongness. Why though? Well, because lying is, a, it's it's hard. Because, Are you like, objectifying my actions? Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. You're objectifying me. I'm oppressed. See, it's difficult is to say. Is oppression not worse than murder? Oh, <laughs> uh, you could argue that. I'm going yeah, to argue that. Oppression. I'm going to play devil's advocate. Oppression is worse than murder. I'd well, rather kill an oppressive regent than continue to be oppressed. Ooh, you could say that because the oppressive region could be making your life go less well, and therefore you're not maximizing good in society, and therefore by killing them you'd actually increase the good in society. But that's um. That's utilitarian. Yeah, that's utilitarian. Yeah, but if you kill someone, you remove any chance of them creating utils. Yeah. Like let's say for example they get a kick out of oppressing you, they're creating utils. No, but what case. if what if for example you knew that by killing this one person you would increase the utils of. You don't. When you're, I when know, you, take, you don't yeah. know for sure. Because like, if you're going to make that argument, like, their family's going to be really pissed off and really sad that you killed yeah. them. Let's say they go on, like, a hellbent yeah. and, like, just oppress you more. Yeah. Like. But you could right. remove an oppressive regime without, um, killing them. 
And that would still... Nah. Mugabe? 